Hello everyone, and today we are going to start doing some tutorials using Fusion 360. Uh, Fusion 360 is a 3D modeling software uh, owned by Autodesk, which also makes Inventor. And uh, basically this software works similar to Inventor or even things like Onshape, which is a free software. Um, you start as a sketch, and from that sketch you build up, and then you can either start removing material or adding material. And there's a number of features like patterning and uh, a whole host of other things. What's nice about Fusion 360 over Inventor is that on the left here, if you look when you open up your window, you basically can access or you have the ability to access all of your files online or on the cloud. You also can be able to edit them online as well. So if you're like in a meeting somewhere and you don't have, you're not at your desktop where Fusion 360 is held, you can still get to that and um, be able to modify it, which is nice. So for a school use, it actually works out pretty good because the students will have this loaded, Fusion 360 loaded at, on a school computer, and then with their Autodesk account, be able to access and edit their files. So kind of like a Google Drive or a Microsoft 365 thing. So it's pretty neat. Uh, what we're gonna basically model today is uh, a little gear. This uh, gear is for a 68, uh, 68 Fiat Dina uh, passenger side windshield wiper gear. Um, this is a helical gear. I'm gonna kind of just tone it down just to go through some of the processes just to show you how it works. And um, that's it. We'll make it in two pieces so then we can actually do an assembly and uh, we'll create some drawings for it too, but real basic stuff just so you can kind of see the capability and run through some of the simpler things with it. So uh, this gear here, that is uh, also a picture I've got up on the screen. I'm gonna go through the measurements, they're not critical. Uh, one of the best things to do when you're learning something like this is try to, you know, if you miss a dimension or it's um, not super critical, don't worry about it. Uh, get through all the basics first, then you can always go back and kind of tweak things if you want or redo it and it just takes time to learn how to use all these things. So uh, to familiarize yourself with this screen, uh, if you've used Inventor, it's kind of similar. Um, Onshape, I think, is kind of similar too. And you know, you basically have your design panel right here, um, which basically where you'll be making it. Generative design is a cool new fe is a cool feature where basically based on a set of parameters, it'll send this up to the cloud and then come back with the best possible solutions to make something. It's pretty neat. Um, I believe you have to buy this with the education software, you don't get it. Then you have rendering, basically how it looks, like if you wanted to, you know, as the little icon shows there, kind of adding different like skins to it and stuff. Animation for assemblies. Then you have simulations to run through. Uh, manufacturing, this is where you're gonna do any sort of like uh, cam processes, um, such as like milling or lathe work or CNC plasma cutting or water jet, laser jet, any stuff like that happens there. And then you can create your drawings right there. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so we're gonna start with this gear. Oh, down on the bottom before I forget is your timeline and you'll see that populating as we go through. So we're gonna start with a sketch. The plane you start on is really up to you. Uh, because this shape isn't too complex, I usually start with one. Now, if you notice here, my units are in inches. If you want to change it to millimeters, you go into document settings right here. So you click the little arrow and it'll say inches. You could change your active units. You click on that little window comes up on the left here and you could change it. Okay. So that's it. Uh, one thing I like about this over inventor is that the sketch pile comes up with some things that I would normally use right away in inventor. It's here. So you can kind of turn things on and off, which is nice. All right, so we're gonna start with a sketch of a circle. So here, I can pick a number of different things. So if you hit the drop down, there's like hotkeys, you can use L for line and then circle. You can hit C, right? So it's nice to remember these occasionally, but you have different types of circles depending on what you wanna do. We're just gonna do a regular center diameter circle. And there's arcs and polygons and we'll try to get through some of these. So we're just gonna go circle, circle, and I'm gonna click here. We're gonna do the outer portion first. So if I just want to take, I'm just going to do some real rough measurements on this one. Let's use the dial calipers. And we'll change this to inches. So it's about 2.1 inches. Let's just call it two inches. It makes life easier. So two, enter. Okay. If you want to change the dimension, double click on it, you can change it. So if we wanted 2.25, there we go up to 2.25. Um, from here, it does have a keyway. And um, 
where the chef's gonna go on, I'm gonna leave it for now. So we finished sketch, and now we have this feature. We can go to go to extrude. This is pretty much how everything works. Extrude. Now you can do this two ways. You can click, drag the arrow up, down, or over here you can put it in. Notice on this, you have a couple of things. The direction, one side, so you can extrude just one way up. Two sides, it'll extrude in two different directions, as you can see there. And then you have symmetric two different sides, but whatever value you pick here goes up on that way. All right, we are just gonna do one side. The depth of this, I believe, was like seven millimeters. All right, so we're gonna call it 0.3 inches. Just real quick. So come into here, 0.3, enter. There we go. So that, now if I hold down shift in the scroll wheel, I can orbit. Holding down the scroll wheel, pans, like that. So I'm just, you can see around, you've basically created the disc. Now we're gonna do an extrusion off this disc. Click on the surface, create sketch. Notice on the bottom of my screen, this timeline, you can actually click and drag it back to go to different parts where you were, similar to the browser history that was in Inventor. So I got the sketch. So let's just get back into that. There we go. I'm gonna do another circle, C. All right, now this, we're gonna do it for that back side here. So if we look at it, so we'll call that 1.75, 1.75. All right, there we go. Enter, shift, all right? And we scroll through, I'm gonna finish sketch. Now this is press pull, all right? So this will basically modify geometry as well, similar to an extrusion. Okay, so I'm just gonna do extrude. Uh, you can do the press pull, click that open area, and that goes in a distance. Let's see here. Looks like about 0.125 or an eighth inch, which you could do one divided by eight as well, and then do the math. Now notice I went the wrong way. No big deal. You can double click into on the timeline where you were, and you can say, oh, I went the wrong way, so I can go negative one divided by eight, and it brings it in. Let's see, see, oh, something happened there. Oh, okay. So what happened was, I double clicked into it. Notice the operation is join, so that's adding material. I wanna to go to cut. And now you can see it's red, there's the cut. Good, so that's one side of this thumb. Let's go back, click. I'm gonna do another sketch on that surface. So you could right click and do create sketch, right, right there. And now we're gonna do another circle, lots of circles with this. And that's gonna be this outer portion here. It's one inch. Okay. Finish sketch. All right, we can extrude that up. And some of these can be done in one operation as well. And that extrudes up, let's see, 0.3 inches. All right, so it's up, joining, we're all good. Okay. So now we have it cut out and recessed on that side like that, we are going to put that in. A hole that runs through for the shaft. Let's take a quick look, 0.36. So I'm gonna to go to circle, click, 0.36. There we go, finish, finish sketch. So I'm gonna to go to extrude, click that, and I'm just gonna pull that all the way through. So you can see how I put that Done. And it's on the cut, good. So that's the basics of kind of like this little gear. And we'll do a couple of things too also. So now we're gonna add some teeth to it. We are gonna click on the surface, create sketch. So we're gonna do some real basic. Now gears have a lot that go into the teeth. Uh, geometry, such as diametral pitch and your pressure angles, all that. we're gonna do like a real simple gear. It does not matter. I am gonna go into create We'll go to polygon and there's two different types. You have circumscribed and then you have inscribed. It just depends on kind of like where it's measuring on the polygon itself to create whatever it is. So I don't know, um, 
Uh, let's do the inscribed polygon. Doesn't really make a difference. Now, when I do this, right, there it is. But notice, I can hit tab and change it to a triangle. So let's make a triangle. And I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know. Let's make, so notice as I zoom in here, as I roll the scroll wheel, not really getting it the way I want. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. I really want it on this point right here, which we can actually do. Okay, let's do that again. Create, polygon, inscribe. Like I said, makes no difference. Now see, like it's not really, we'll, we'll use a constraint to get that line up. Normally it snaps. All right, click, tab three. There we go. That's it. So now we have it. I'm gonna use, let's use a uh, tab. Let's go point one, two, five. So it's a little bit bigger. Click. All right, so that, and then we're gonna pattern this all the way around. Now that's a relatively big gear, uh, the, uh, aggressive tooth design. Whatever, it doesn't matter for this. We can go smaller if we really want. Say we do. Hit escape, double click on point 0.125 and make it point 0.1. Hit enter, there we go. This is a little bit small, let's go with that. We're going to finish sketch. Now there are a number of constraints we could use. We could lock this in vertically on that point and we'll go through constraints a little bit. Finish sketch. The next step is we're going to extrude this. So I'm gonna click extrude. Now notice you can select different portions. It actually doesn't matter and click this. You can click that as well. Drag it back to cut. There we go. Now you don't wanna to have to do this over and over again. This did have 68 teeth in it. I think it was 68. And um, I was able to use a different way of making the gear than this. But now what we can do, you'll see regular pattern up on top. But if we hit the drop down on the create, all right, uh, where did it go? Let's go to modify. Create, should be the pattern. Oh, there it is right here, pattern, circular pattern. Click that. Pattern type, there's faces. So you can select just the face. We don't want just the face. We want to drop down and we want to do the body. So the body is what we actually made. Oops. Body, oops, sorry, features. That's the feature we want. So we go pattern type, features, click on that. Axis, you can usually select like an outside circle of any of them, or you can select an actual axis like that. So if we look in our preview, you could see the three are right there. Well, what if we want more than three? And we can do a full type or an angle, right? We're doing full, we wanna keep them. So now you're gonna to have to play with the number. So that's 10. Let's go to 20, all right? So we're getting there, 30, 40, getting closer. Let's try 45. All right, so 45 is actually pretty good. I'm gonna try 47 based on these numbers. You could change it a little bit. I'm gonna to go to full 50, let's see what happens. I like that. Oh, too many instances, so it gave me a warning. So let's drop it down. 49, it likes that, okay? Okay. So now what it's gonna do is that's it. You just cut out all those. It's actually a nice little gear. A couple of other things on here, right? We don't like sharp corners on things. It's usually typically uh, stress points on it. So we're gonna do a fillet. So this fillet, I call it fillet, some people call it fillet. You hit F or click on it, come into here to this point. And if I type in point one, two, five, notice how it adds material into it, okay? I actually did this. The actual uh, Fiat Dino gear did not have that on it and there were stress crats going through it over there. So I added that in, we hit, okay. All right. You can actually select more surfaces too as well, but we only need that. And then on this side, I'm actually gonna do what's called a chamfer. So if I hit the drop down, you'll see chamfer. And I'm gonna do a slight chamfer 
on this outside edge. Now, if you do want, so if I do 0 0.05, there you go, it's a nice slight chamfer. If you do it too big, it'll give you a warning. All right, and there's different types. There's equidistant, depending on how it is, and you can get into the specifics. They actually, you can go through them and do them. I'm gonna hit okay on that. So I have a slight chamfer there, like that. And that gear is done. All right, we're gonna do save, you go up to the top. There we go. And I'll call this uh, practice gear. Location, I'm gonna just put it into some default projects. I got practice stuff, let's put it into practice stuff. And uh, let's save. There we go. So practice gear version one, that's your gear. Now, say you want to add some properties to it. We can do that as well. If we go over and come to the over here on the side, you'll see body. So we have body one. I can right click on it and we can change the physical material. So you do that. And let's say we're making this out of plastic, which I did. We did ABS plastic. Actually, I did PLA. It should be in here. Nylon would have been perfect. So I'm going to do nylon, actually. You're going to click and drag it over. It makes the whole thing out of nylon now. Okay, close. So now this has the properties of nylon. We can then also right click on that body. Then we can do the appearance. And you can come over here. So if I wanted paint, and let's say it is a glossy paint, we can make this green. Take it, bring it over. There you go. So now it's green. You can do that for individual faces as well. Okay, so now you can see we have this nice gear. It's actually pretty nice looking. Uh, for 3D printing, it's probably how it would do. So it loses some of the uh, features in it, but that is it. And I'm just gonna save it again. It's gonna ask me user saved and that's fine. You just hit okay. Now what's nice about this is say like I had the number of teeth wrong. I can go down to my timeline. I can either drag it over, right? And let's see, let's go one more, right? And I can double click on that and now I can change the number, okay? Or if I wanted to change anything, I can go back and do that in the timeline down here. And that's pretty much uh, it. If you can kind of do that, you're good to go. Now, if we wanted, say the customer wanted a keyway added into this, well, we can do that too. We can add a small keyway in. All right, so you would click on this surface, create sketch. Now you would do a rectangle and I like the two point center rectangle. All right, bring it in. All right, let's add a small keyway, maybe uh, 0.125, where we could say 3 16 probably three, I don't know. It seems big, 3 16 I think 1 8 is probably better. 1 8 let's do by 1 8 All right, that would be a keyway that you could put into it, click, Finish sketch. If you want to, this is actually had a knurled end on it. There is no keyway. And we can click, click, drag it all the way through. Hit OK. And now you have a square keyway in there. That's it. So that is a version of a gear, straight cut gear, missing all like the real minutia of a straight cut gear, but it works. Or it probably would work for whatever you're making. All right, just hit save one more time. Save. All right, so next time I'm gonna show you basically how to create an assembly with this. We'll create the shaft that goes through here and also uh, create assembly and drawings so that you can kind of go run through the whole process. All right, see you in a little bit, bye.